peculiar spiral whorls. Tree trunks embedded in the sand were pulled loose and carried by the flow in a sort of spiral dance. As the speed of the circling water increased, they were drawn closer and faster toward the middle of the lake. Once they reached the center, the trunks tilted up and were sucked under with great force. None of the trees resurfaced. Shortly afterward, the lake calmed down. But then, the bottom of the lake started rumbling, and suddenly, a spout as high as a house shot up out of its center with a thundering noise, spinning upon itself and overflowing from the top like a fountain. Then, just as suddenly, the spout collapsed sending waves to splash against the shore. Victor had witnessed how a lake without fresh water coming into it can spontaneously renew itself through the power of the archetypal spiral. On another occasion, Victor was watching the spiraling flight of an eagle over a lake, suddenly dropping to be off with a fish in his talons. How he could catch fish without ever touching the water was a mystery. But as he watched, the eagle flew upwards, describing an ever-decreasing spiral. What happened next was so unbelievable that Victor almost fell out of the tree. Fish in the lake were spiraling upward, just like the bird above. One after the other, like pearls on a string, they came closer to the surface. Because the spiral was becoming smaller, some of the fish were crowded together at the surface. A dark shadow fell over the spot, a little flash, and the eagle took off with its prey. As he studied the mysterious qualities of water, Victor perceived it to be a substance which is alive, which is born from underground springs and develops to maturity. Its mysteries are similar to those of blood in the human body. Healthy blood is the carrier of life in the human organism and living water plays the same role in the body of the earth. But when treated improperly or polluted, water loses its vitality and can die. It was clear to Victor that the continuation of life on earth depended totally on preserving the purity of our water. The natural course of water is a rhythmical meandering. This principle becomes manifest in all dimensions of flowing water from the small trickle with its little rhythmical loops, through rivers whose loops grow ever larger, to the loops of the ocean currents surrounding the earth. As long as man had not disturbed the organic balance and Mother Earth was able to donate her blood, the water, to provide a healthy vegetation, there was no need to construct artificial canals since the earth had already provided waterways. Today, however, when water is diverted from its source, all of life is dependent upon stale, unhealthy water. It is desperately important to rediscover nature's ways if human beings, animals, and the land are to be saved from decline and the earth is not to die from thirst. The most convincing and obvious proof that life is gradually perishing can be found in the streams and rivers of our industrial areas, which are already so polluted that they are no longer rivers, but streaming sewers. Here, the Chicago River is not only a chemical cesspool, but its flow has been artificially reversed. As a result of such widespread pollution, our underground water, including most private wells, and the springs which are the source of our water, are becoming contaminated and unfit to drink. They are now poisoning people, just as they have killed the fish which only a few years ago used to splash in them. When Victor prophesied early this century that a bottle of water would soon be more expensive than wine, he was ridiculed by all the people around him. But drinking water is more expensive than gasoline today, and countless millions in the world are dependent on bottled water to survive. The droughts are getting worse. The underground water tables are falling lower than ever. Back in the early 1930s, 
Victor set to work to build a machine that would produce good drinking water artificially. It would copy the natural processes of bubbling mountain spring water. His first plan for a water purifier developed into this egg-shaped apparatus for what became known as biosynthesis. In this process, small amounts of trace minerals and carbon dioxide are added to the water, which is then energized in darkness set into a harmonious spiral motion by the specially shaped agitator. The dynamics of the water flow are simplified in this diagram. A cooling coil provides a temperature control and the vessel is enclosed in an insulating shell to contain the implosion energy within. The egg shape, another of nature's secrets, was chosen by Victor as a perfect form for a vortex chamber. An egg has a perfect curve for sustaining the momentum of a vortex within it. A central theme of Victor's thinking was a cycloid space curve observed in the motion of the planets as they orbit around the Sun while at the same time spinning on their own axes. They move in open spirals or eggways, as Victor called them. The spiral pipe incorporates this characteristic. It is conical and generally egg-shaped, except for an inner bend which causes the water to roll inwards, as shown in Victor's egg geometry. Word soon spread that Victor Schauberger could make living water, and people streamed to his home to try it, with excellent results. He became known as the water magician. The vitality of water can be measured by its electrical potential. Every drop manifests an electromagnetic field, as does every body on Earth. The structure of moving water consists of layers, and from the outside layer towards the center, there is an increased density and an increase in electrical potential. The naturally spiraling movement of water in rivers and streams builds up the electrical charge. But when water is forced to flow through rigid channels and metallic pipes, it short circuits and discharges its life force. Bacteria thrive in this medium, which is then treated chemically with the end result of water, which for all intents and purposes is dead. As we can no longer gain any life force from such devitalized water, Victor designed special spiral pipes to protect and preserve the living water. In this patent for the conduction of water, curved wedges are attached to the inside of pipes to direct the water into an inward spiral. Victor believed that the damage to water caused by our iron and concrete pipes leads to cancer and other illnesses so prevalent today. In this patent, a device is placed in the pipe or tube to create a vitalizing whirling motion of the water. In this patent, granted in 1958, the tube shown crosswise is egg-shaped with an inner bend and is wound in a spiral fashion to reduce the loss of flow speed. As he struggled with the problems involved in rejuvenating water, Victor was also deeply concerned with the principles behind modern technology, which is both incredibly wasteful and destructive, and which ultimately threatens all life on our planet. As mentioned earlier, there exist two forms of motion within nature, one that builds up and creates, and the other that breaks down and destroys. This depends on whether the driving force is centripetal, moving towards the center, or centrifugal, moving towards the outside. The centrifugal force leads to destruction, dissolution, and gravity. The centripetal force leads to growth, enrichment, and levity. The ancient symbol of the swastika expresses this dynamic dualism which is true on every level of manifestation. Thus we have spirit and matter, activity and passivity, life flow and life withdrawal, evolution and destruction, implosion or explosion. 
In nature, there is a continuous switch from one movement to the other. But if development is to occur, then the movement of growth must be predominant. Our technology recognizes only one type of motion, the centrifugal force, which leads to heat, combustion, and explosion through friction and pressure. Through concentrating on the destructive force of explosion technology, we see the breaking down and burning of our fossil fuels and other resources, the disintegration of our environment, and the ultimate manifestation of the death technology, with nuclear reactors spewing out radioactive waste and other poisonous residues. Instead of nature becoming a garden of beautifully blossoming flowers, it becomes a filthy dirt heap of ugliness and death. On the other hand, the implosion technology of Victor Schauberger is creative, purifying, and constructive. The centripetal motion of the vortex is a suction force which creates an intense vacuum. It cools rather than heats and increases the electrical potential of the water. During hurricanes, twisters, and tornadoes, the same spiraling suction forces are at work and they can easily lift tons of seawater, whole buildings, or even railroad trains which lie in their path. Imagine what could be achieved if it were possible to produce them by mechanical means. Again, by imitating nature, Victor developed his suction turbine, or trout turbine, named after his observations of trout moving upstream against the current. The fish is a natural vortex machine. Its open mouth creates a vacuum which propels it forward, and by means of its gills and body shape, a vortex is created around its entire body. Victor described one occasion on a clear moonlit night when he watched a large trout move into a whirlpool at the foot of a waterfall. As he watched, the trout floated out of this vortex and up the waterfall, as if drawn by an invisible force. In his trout turbine, or implosion motor, water, or air, is guided through a vortex funnel and through specially designed spiral curved pipes toward a central point which forms a strong vortexian motion, condensing and cooling the water. In these pipes, the resultant suction reduces friction and a biological vacuum, or negative pressure, is created and energy is increased. Totally opposed to the plundering of fossil fuels such as oil from the earth, Victor had said his motor produces its own driving source through the diamagnetic use of water and air. It does not require any other fuel such as coal, oil, or uranium since it can produce its own energy by biological means in unlimited amounts, almost without cost. This power generator was claimed to have created a strong enough electrical field to light up the surroundings like bright daylight. In the Wasserfaden, or water thread experiment, originally carried out by Lord Kelvin, repeated by Victor and his son Walter, and now demonstrated publicly by Retta and Walter Baumgartner, the electrical potential of moving water is made visible to the onlooker. The electrical potential of a very fine stream of water is collected to produce sparks and light up a neon bulb.